So today we'll be working on the last of the 16 foot sill boards. So as a quick recap, here's the cross section, the elevations here of the uh, cabin. And we are working on uh, finishing up this bottom section right here. These are the sill boards. These are 12s, these are 16s. This 12, this 16, this 12 are already finished. This is the last one right here. That's the one we'll be cutting today. Here's the log we'll be working with. This is a um, white fir that uh, we cut off of the homestead here. It's uh, 17 feet long and it's uh, a little bit tricky to work with. If you can look sight down that you'll see the blue line that I snapped. We've got to get a 6 by 10 out of here and this thing's got a real curve in it. So as you can see right there in that area we're actually going to run out of wood. So we'll have a little bit of weight and a little soft corner on that but uh, we'll turn that to the bottom on the inside. But I think we can just squeak out uh, enough material on this. So, so as you can see I've got a 2x6 with an aluminum guide on it. That will uh, give me a straight edge to run the Alaskan mini mill on my chainsaw and edge this timber. So we'll use the cordless drill, screw this down and uh, this will be a nice straight guide for our clean cut. So the setback on the first cut is 5 16 What that will give me is I've already predetermined that. That will uh, give me the, the chainsaw will cut just to the outside of the blue line. So I'll bring this to 5 16 and once I have that, I'll put my screw in, secure it in place. Now I'm ready to make my first cut. our first cut and it looks nice and straight no problem have a little bit of wane right here but that's okay we'll turn that down and that'll be that'll be uh, no problem so this tool here you've seen me use is called a draw knife and this is a really really old one I got it from my old neighbor Henry who this belonged to his uh, father or grandfather who was a timber framer I'm not sure but this is really nice for pull you use it and you pull it towards yourself and it's really great for shaving wood, shaving corners, uh, doing decorative things, just a, a great number of things. It's got a grind on it like a chisel. What that means is you've got a flat side here and then a chisel grind there, just like you do on traditional timber framing or all chisels. And the reason for that grind is it prevents, it gives you control uh, to be able to take off material. If you try to shave wood this way there's nothing to prevent the chisel from digging down and going deeper than you want but by having that grind on it you can essentially control the depth as the material glides along the flat portion of the grind you control the depth of the cut by raising or lowering the handle and the same works for the draw knife and I'll show you how that works since we're cutting square timbers out of round logs that they're imperfect and they're different kind of different shapes we're going to run into this once once in a while where we get into the bark of the wood into the round portion and this is called wane and how you deal with this is uh, simply use your draw knife with your chisel edge down and you can very carefully cut that off of there it's very effective and works very quickly you want to take this wane material this this bark off of here because it's bark that draws bugs. If you have firewood logs that are sitting too long, they'll get infested with uh, with bugs, and tr and that's mostly because of the bark. They'll get in the bark and burrow in there. They attack that first because it's softer and it's on the outside. So you don't want to leave firewood down too long, a year or two, any more than that. You start getting a lot of bug problems, and when you bring it in, you can get an infestation in your house.
The goggles that I use when working in the forest, whether it's logging or doing the, any, time, any type of work with a chainsaw mill, are made by this company called Bugs. And what makes them unique is instead of having a polycarbonate lens, they have a wire mesh. And the reason for that is you just, uh, the work is too hard, you sweat, and you will fog up anything with a glass lens or a plastic lens. It just doesn't work. So anything you'll see, uh, guys that are working in the woods or running chainsaws will always have a, wi have a wire mesh. And they make this in three different screens. So they have a fine, a medium, and a coarse which just determines the size of the opening. Uh, this is the medium, it seems to be sufficient, but I have a couple pair of these. I've used them pretty hard, and they seem to be holding up really good. They're comfortable, and they're uh, nice, really nice to have uh, if you're doing work with a chainsaw. So now we want to lay out for our next cut, next and final cut. And this particular piece needs to be a six by 10. So we'll come over here 10 inches. and make our mark. And always, 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 if you miss mark or change your layout, put a cross through every mark that you're not going to use. You'll uh, break your heart, you'll put your string line on this wrong line, cut your timber incorrectly, and you get one shot at this. If it's not done right, you'll be out cutting down another tree and uh, doing the whole process over again. Once we get our marks on here, on both ends, we're gonna use a tool called the chalk box. And what it is, it's a small box that has a door in, and then you fill it full of a colored chalk, a powdered chalk you can see right here. You can, they'll come in blue or red, several different colors. And what that does is it gives you a permanent line that you can use for your layout. So we'll start here at our 10 inch mark, and then run our chalk line down to the other end. Once we do that, will snap it and that will leave a permanent line. And when you're running your chalk box out, make sure you point it down. That way all of the chalk in there will fall to the bottom and generously coat the string. It'd be a good time to double check your measurements. Here's a cool tool from Snap-on that I don't use very often, but has saved, uh, really saved my, uh, saved my bacon in times where I really need to get a bite on something to get it broke loose or I have one chance at it. And it's a pair of pliers that have this unique cam, kind of a lever action. And what that does is it helps you, it gives you the ability to exert four times the force that you do with normal pliers. And they've got really aggressive teeth here and when you get difficult situations like this where like a stripped out screw it's the ideal tool for the job once I get this backed out far enough now I can chuck this up with my drill and back it out the rest of the way here's a tip for getting screws that are stripped out if you get a Phillips screw like this that you can't get a bite on because the head's stripped out you can take your drill and chuck up on the screw, back it out, you get a bite on it with the chucks and uh, sometimes that will help you save the day. Now we'll square the ends. And here's the piece we're working out, the 16 foot sill. Here's a layout diagram. And I've got the layout all completed. And I just finished cutting this tendon right here. And we'll do a mirror image down on the other side. So I'll uh, show you how I've been doing that. I found a little quicker way than I was, than I was using before. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now we're going to chisel out the pockets. So one thing that can save a little time is these pockets are two inches deep. So I'll set the depth of my skill saw right to the bottom of my line. Now I can make these cuts and I'll have a guide so I know how deep to chisel, when to stop chiseling. Thank you. 